What's the first program you've ever written? Oh, <laughs> I have no idea what the first one was. I mean, I I know the first machine that I learned the, that I learned to program on. What is it? Was a, a PDP eight um, at the University of Calgary. Do you remember the specs? <laughs> oh yeah. It, so so the thing had. 4K of RAM. Nice. 12-bit words. The clock rate was, um, it was about a third of a megahertz. Oh, so you didn't even get to the, to the M. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we're, we're like 10,000 times faster these days. Um, and was this, Kind of a, like a supercomputer, like a serious computer for no. The PDP eight I was the the first thing that people were calling like a mini computer. Got it. They were sort of inexpensive enough that that a university lab could maybe afford to buy one. And was there time sharing, all that kind of stuff? Or... Um, there there actually was a time sharing OS for that, but. It wasn't used really widely. The machine that I learned on was one that was kind of hidden in a back corner of the of the computer center, um, and it was it was bought as a as part of a, a um, project to do computer networking, um, but. <sighs> You know, they didn't actually use it very much. It was mostly just kind of sitting there. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of sitting there, and I noticed it was just kind of sitting there. And so I started fooling around with it. And nobody seemed to mind, so I just kept doing that. And I had a keyboard and, like, a, a monitor? Are we, oh, this is way before monitors were common. So it was, it was literally a, a Model 33 teletype. Okay. With a paper tape reader. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the user interface wasn't very good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was uh, it was the first computer ever built with integrated circuits. But by integrated circuits I mean that they would have like ten or twelve transistors on one piece of silicon. Nice. Not the ten or twelve billion <laughs> for the the, the machines have today so what did that i mean feel like if you remember those i mean did you have kind of inklings of the the magic of exponential kind of improvement of moore's law of the potential of the future that was at your fingertips kind of thing or no, was no. it just a cool yeah it was to just with? a toy you know i had always liked building stuff but one of the problems with building stuff is that you need to have parts, you know, you need to have pieces of wood or wire or switches or stuff like that. And those all cost money. And here you could build, you could build arbitrarily things. complicated things. And I didn't need any physical materials. Um, it required no money. That's such right? a good way to put programming. You're right. It's uh, if you love building things, it, uh, Okay, so it, yeah, completely accessible. You don't need anything. And anybody from anywhere could just build something really cool. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. If you've got access to a computer, you can you can build all kinds of crazy stuff. Um and you know, and w when you were somebody like me who had like really no money, um and I mean, I, I I remember just lusting after being able to buy like a transistor. <laughs> um, you know, and when I would do yeah. sort of electronics kind of projects, they were mostly made done by like dumpster diving for trash. You know, and you know, one of my big hauls was uh, discarded relay racks from the back of a the phone company switching center. Oh, nice! That that was the big memorable treasure. 
Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that was a. What really, do you use that for? I I built a machine that played tic tac toe. <laughs> nice. Out of relays, of course. The thing that was really hard um, was that all the relays required a specific voltage, but getting a power supply that will would do that voltage was pretty hard. And since I had a bunch of trashed television sets, I had to um, sort of cobble together something that was wrong, but worked. Um, so I was actually running these relays at 300 volts huh. and, and none of the electrical connections were like properly sealed off. Surprised you survived that period of your life. Oh, for so many reasons. <laughs> for so many reasons. I mean, you know, you're, you know, it, it's pretty common for teenage geeks to discover, oh, thermite. That's real easy to make. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm glad you did. But do you remember the, do you remember what uh, program in, in Calgary that you wrote? Anything that stands out? And what um, language? Well, so mostly the anything of any size was assembly code. Um, and actually, before I learned assembly code, there was this programming language on the PDP-8 called Focal 5. And Focal 5 was kind of like a really stripped down Fortran. And I remember playing, you know, building programs that did things like um, play blackjack um, or solitaire or, and for some reason or other, the things that I really liked were ones where they were just like plot plotting graphs. So something with uh, like a function or a data and then you'd plot it. Yeah. Yeah, I did a, bunches of those things and went, ooh, pretty pictures. <laughs> um, and so this would like print out, again, no no monitors. Right, so it was like on a teletype. <sighs> yeah. You know, so, so it's using something that's kind of like a, a typewriter yeah. and then using those to plot functions. 